first and foremost. I want to give all honors and praises and glory belongs to my Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wahavakakwada. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai, in whom we reverence and honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that taught me this truth, and those of you that are in the spirit, and to the hopeful elect across the globe, and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters that are listening and also learning in the hope of being saved. This lesson is going to be based on discipleship. Okay? And this is, as you can see by this image, is from the catacombs of Rome. Okay, which there was loads and loads and loads of images of the disciples. Okay, and the disciples, what were they? Followers. So to become a disciple, that means you're a follower. And to be a follower, you have to be a, what, a good learner. Type in that word disciple. Okay. So let me just a minute, it's playing up. There it is. Mafetes. 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 So a disciple is a learner, okay, a pupil. Disciples, because you got individuals you're seducing our spirit from them that say you don't need no one to teach you. Everybody was taught by someone. See, that's where that humility always has to be there. Okay. No, they needed to be taught. Okay. They needed to be led. And who were they led by? Yahweh Shai. Okay, let's go to John 8. Okay. And 31. And then it says Yahweh Shai to those Jews which believed on him. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And that wasn't just those 12 disciples, it was those that were also listening, because you, you, you do know you had more than 12 disciples, you had many that are not even mentioned in the scriptures and the disciples were followers of Yahweh Shai okay, when you are my disciples indeed, that it says if you continue in my word, this is about abiding in the word of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai and he has a doctrine, and that doctrine was given to a particular group of men upon earth and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the truth, it makes us free, spiritually, okay, in every way, and mentally. Okay? Not so much with the Christians, because they don't know the truth, so they're not free. Okay, they're not free mentally, they're still in mental bondage. And I'll quickly want to go into that word, free. Eleutherao. It says to make free. To set at liberty. Okay, but the liberty is in Yahweh Shai through that mercy. Not the liberty that Esau teaches you from the dominion of sin, and that's through Yahweh Shai. Okay, and it's a very, very important thing. When you go to Strong's definition, it says from moral ceremonial or mortal liability because you had the Pharisees back then the wicked Pharisees, chief priests and the elders that were trying to keep them under specific particular laws that they were making for themselves so they can keep them in what? bondage okay a particular ceremonial washing that's what they were saying why do not, why do not your disciples wash okay, wash their hands before they eat so all these things, even free from that Okay, so you've got to understand the scriptures. Bear me just a minute. So now we went into that. We're going to go straight to who all the disciples were. The 12. Matthew 10. And many are called unto him. His 12 disciples, which are followers. Okay, which they were under tutelage. He gave them power against unclean spirits. So who gave the disciples that power? Yahweh Shai. Against unclean spirits. Okay seducing spirits, anything that's opposing this word, to cast them out, to get rid of them, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. 
So they would not be able to do this if Yahweh was not by their side. It was Yahweh that gave them that power to do that. It wasn't of themselves. They didn't just magically get that power. Now the name, spare me just a minute, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And sickness was as well what? Demons. Now the names of the twelve apostles, okay, and this is when they were sent out, because apostles means sent out, are these. The first, Simon. He was called Peter, okay. And this is talking about what? Simon bar Jonah. He was called Peter. Andrew, this was Peter's brother, okay. And he lived in a region called Bethsaida, which was a seaport, okay, because they were fishermen. This was a rough city, okay. James, a fisherman. For, for you to be a fisherman, you have to be rough. Fisherman ain't no weak job. That's that's a man. That's a man's job. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip, and Bar. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Bartomano, Bar, Tol. Lamu and Thomas and Matthew the publican. Okay, Matthew the publican. What was a publican? Tax collector. Okay, James the son of Alphaeus and Lebeus, whose surname was Tabib Tabibius. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Simon the Canaanite, and he was not a Canaanite. He was in that region, living in that region of Canaanite, Canaan. Okay, the Canaanite. Okay, bear me just a minute. I will catch up. Because you had our people that were also living amongst the other nations. Bear me just a minute. Baba Kisha. Okay, bear me just a minute. Baba Kisha, Baba Kisha, Baba Kisha. And there was loads of Simons in the scriptures. There was Simon of Cyrene, there was Simon of Tana, there was Simon Magath, Samaritan. Okay. There was a Simon, Simon of the Zealot of Tana. Okay. Bear with me just a minute. Anyway, let's continue. Simon the Cana and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. And he was even given power. But he betrayed Jehovah's side. For what? 30 pieces of silver for money. That's why you don't want to be covetous. That's why you've got to watch out for men that are covetous. That's why you've got to watch out for men that are envious. That's why you've got to watch out for men that are always after that bag. Always after that money. you got to watch out for that. <laughs> okay. These 12, Yahweh sent forth. So he sent them forth through what the Spirit and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, which were the other nations, and into the city of Samaritan. Enter ye not. Because there was heathens there. Even though that was still our land, Samaria, but there was heathens there, because remember, they were a place in a time of what? Hosea. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And our people are lost. So that's who was seeking, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Bringing them back to the shepherd, which is your other side. Okay, and that's what the, that's what the disciples do. He would, verse seven. And as you go, preach, saying, "The kingdom of heaven is at hand." Okay, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and twofold. They were actually raising the dead, people that were dead, and raising the spiritually dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. So as much as we receive, we gotta give. Okay? Provide neither gold nor silver, nor brass in your purses, nor strip for your journey, neither two coats. So you don't need to skip. Oh, what am I gonna say in this and that? You don't need that to write down the no notes, especially when you're on the highways and byways. A brother shouldn't really need notes. When you're doing a sit down, that's different. Neither two coats, neither shoes, nor spades, for the workman is worthy of his meat, which is the reward. And into whatsoever city or town you shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy. So when you go to a town, you first go to a town, you may be looking about, inquiring, is this the right spot? You might stay there for a while, and there abide till you go then. 
Okay. And there are by tree you go then and when you come into the house then meet it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. And it's the same for a town, a city, a particular region. But if you be not worthy, let your peace return unto you. So particular places you may go to, you have to leave. You don't go back there again. And whoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. And one particular place had done that, and now you're hearing all types of things happening. And it didn't take long. Stabbing, shooting, people getting attacked. And it was in the same particular spot I was at. Now all types of madness was happening. Okay? And it says, Whoever shall not receive you, now pray the words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. In other words, that city has a um, very heavy impending judgment upon it because they were not receiving the word of Yahweh. This is how serious this truth is. Have you ever wondered why certain places you don't go anymore? And you've heard, you've heard hair say that bad things have been happening. You may have been hanging around a certain spot for a long time. And as soon as you leave, all types of things start happening. This truth is very real, baby. Just a minute. Now I want to go to John 14 and 26. Just a minute. This is John 14 and 26. Um, start at 23 your house are asking and said unto it stay with this minute start at 23 Judas saith unto him not Iscariot this ain't Judas Iscariot Lord how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world so even within the truth there was only a certain man he was manifesting himself unto your house are asking and said unto him if a man loved me he will keep my word. And my father will love him, and he will come unto him and make our abode with him. So remember, the key thing is Yahweh Shai. Okay? Not for you to worship man, Yahweh Shai. So he says, if you love him, you're going to keep his word. And the father, you will love, he will love you too, and he will abode with you and come in unto you. And he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. This is when you have a service with them. Okay? But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Bear me just a minute. Okay, so the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And that's what comforts us. So if you're not comforted, well, then you've got to ask yourself, well, well where is the Holy Spirit? Because it's the Holy Spirit that comforts you. It's the Holy Spirit that keeps us going. Okay? Just a minute. Just multitasking right now. Okay, hold that on deck. But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, not the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that's that life force whom the Father will send in my name. Okay. So why would the Heavenly Father need to send that in Yahweh's name? Because Yahweh would not be with them. But he would be with them through the Holy Spirit. Okay? He shall teach you all things. So the disciples, the apostles, they were worried because Yahweh was not with them. But Yahweh was with them, building them up so they could be strong when he left. And he said, look, I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit, which is going to guide you. So yeah, you have men teaching you. But then there comes a point where now you're guided by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Because you don't stay a baby forever. And he shall teach you all things. Who? Yahweh Shai. Through the Spirit. And bring all things to your remembrance. Reaming them back members from your members. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Okay? So let's go with that word comforter. Paracletus. Paracletus. Paracletus, a comfort, an advocate. So the advocate is the Holy Spirit. Someone to call to one's side, especially call to one's aid. So it's there, and it's through angels. 
okay, this summer to help you out, the aces on the right hand side. For your ace, one who pleads another's cause before a judge. Which is what? Through the Holy Spirit, through the angels, through your house, a pleader, a counsel for defense, a legal assistant, or an advocate. See, men in this world, they think about Esau, you know, a judge. Don't worry about the judge, Esau's judges. Don't worry about his judges. Don't worry about the wicked Pharisees. The elect have an assistant. They have an advocate. They have someone that's pleading their case. Okay, through the Holy Spirit, one who pleads another's cause with one. And that's through the Holy Spirit, an intercessor. It's like back in the day you had Moses that was an intercessor. Now you have says our intercessor. Through the Holy Spirit. Of muscling up in his exhortation of the Most High's right hand. Pleading with the Father for the pardon of our sins. So through the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit. He's pleading with, with the Heavenly Father for your sins. Pardon of your sins. In the widest sense, the helper, a secure, an aider, an assistant. Of the Holy Spirit destined to take place of Mashiach with the apostles after his ascension to the Father. Then Yahweh said, went back to the Heavenly Father to lead them to a deeper knowledge. So you were going to gain deeper knowledge through what the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is a guider, it's a revealer of secrets, of knowledge, of the gospel truth, and give them divine strength needed to enable them to undergo trials. So it's a spirit that will able to undergo these trials. Not through another, not through another individual. Through the spirit that Yahweh has given you, but he needs to give you that for you to endure. And persecutions on behalf of the divine kingdom. Woo! You see why it's so heavy to look up words. Okay? Let's see this. Verse 1, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. And that peace. It's through the comforter. Because it's a comfort. A comfort is peace. Shalom. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Because the world's peace is, is, is not real peace. It's chaos in this world. Not as the world give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You have heard how I said unto you I go away. And I come again unto you. So you have said going to return. That's in that assurance. I have. If you love me, you would rejoice, because the disciples were sad about that. They didn't want him to leave. Because I said I go unto the Father. My Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it come to pass, you might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the Prince of this world cometh, and I have nothing in me. The Prince of this world is what Satan. But the world may know that I have loved the Father, as the Father gave me commandment. Even so I do. Arise, let us go forth. Go hence, and he carried on moving on, him and his disciples. Okay, so yes, it all starts off what with discipleship. Then later, you get built up, and your house that gives you what you need on your journey. Because if you don't have that, does that mean you're going? Someone's going to be holding your hand for this whole journey? No, it's the Holy Spirit that leads you. Okay, but this does this mean now you don't you don't you don't listen to men? No, you still listen to men. So that's that higher level of understanding. So with this listen, I hope this is edifying. I hope this put a little pep in your step. And until the next time, shalom.